Abandon all hope, ye who enter here. It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Wells. We're not that bad. Have you seen Nash Bridges? <laughs> Welcome back to X-Play, the show that has the audacity to review a bowling game. Yes, and a continued effort to prove that we're totally open to new experiences that don't involve physical activity. We have a review of a dynamic new bowling game for the PS2. Dynamic. Sounds better than unnecessary. Here's a review of Strike Force Bowling. You know your gaming system has earned its stripes when bowling titles start appearing on shelves. Now it's not necessarily a precursor to the apocalypse, but rather a positive sign that mainstream sports are being adequately covered to the point where publishers are looking for something new to fill the void. That's a good thing, of course, especially to those patiently holding out for versions of horseshoes, croquet, and badminton. Strike Force Bowling is a budget release hoping to bowl over PS2 owners while trying to spare gamers from complicated controls and any hint of depth. The interface here, which involves timing button presses at specific intervals along the horizontal meters, couldn't be simpler. If it were any more basic, it would be hooked on phonics. Players can move their bowler left or right to set the ball's path indicated by a red line, like so. Spin is adjusted by moving a percentage marker up and down, which curiously has no effect on the line showing the ball's direction. After these two adjustments, it's time to bowl, which involves pressing a button twice. The first to set power, and the second to set accuracy. And that's that. So while the pin action seems realistic enough, there doesn't seem to be any noticeable effect of oil on the ball, and the lanes all appear to have the same amount of carry. Sadly, Strike Force Bowling looks like an early 3D computer title. Something you might have played back in the days of the old wood burning computers. There are only eight characters available two males, a few females, an alien, a robot, and one skeleton. The skeleton, ironically, shows up when you play skins rounds. The bowler moves stiffly and has the same awkward looking animations for reaction shots, like cheers, jumps, tantrums, and so forth. Which are fun to watch, like, what, twice maybe? Yeah, note, I said maybe. Unfortunately, there's little difference between the lanes other than appearance. They did toss in a golf variation, but I don't know. I suppose it was meant to be cool. Anyway, well, gosh, that's about it. What you see is what you get. So since Strike Force Bowling doesn't have the depth or realism to satisfy bowling fans, nor does it have the visual flair off the gameplay to lure arcade sports junkies from their usual titles, you might end up with buyer's remorse. The game looks and feels every bit like its budget status, which might be okay if you adjust your expectations accordingly. For most players, however, Strike Force Bowling is the game equivalent of bowling shoes. Cheap, tacky, a little stinky, and something best left behind the rental counter. We can only afford it an underwhelming two out of five.